The first chapter I'll be dealing today is approach to the patient with uh, gastrointestinal disease. So what we have to know is an overall structural orientation. What do I mean by that? Now overall structural orientation is a methodology by which we it will help us remember things systematically in our subject. So how I deal with things is from mouth till anus that we pictureize things and based on that mouth, stomach, esophagus, we have the small bowel, the large bowel and we also deal with the pancreas, the liver, the biliary system. So overall these are all the things that in an order we uh, evaluate. Then a role of peristalsis also plays a major role and most of the time the peristalsis occurs from in a proximal to distal uh, way. Then we also deal with pancreas and biliary system. So this has to be kept in mind. The pancreatic juices contains enzymes for carbohydrates, proteins and fat digestion as well as bicarbonates to optimize the pH for enzyme activation. Now the bile is also quite important. Now the bile is secreted by the liver, stored in the gallbladder and is essential for fat digestion. Now most of the nutrient absorption occurs in the small intestine. When we go to uh, colon, now colonic mucosa also plays a good role in dehydrating the fluid content that it receives from the terminal ileum and reduces from a volume of 1000 to 1500 ml to 100 to 200 ml when it excretes. So that's the importance of it. So the colon not just dehydrates the colonic secretions but also has an important component called the bacterial colonization which we call as microbiota. So uh, the colon possesses a dense microbial colonization that ferments undigested carbohydrates and short chain fatty acids. Now these uh, gut microbiomes also uh, modulate immune and uh, physiological activities. Now the colonic contractions exhibit a to and fro character which helps in promoting fecal desiccation. The proximal colon that is the ascending colon side mixes and absorbs fluid while the distal colon exhibits peristaltic uh, contractions and mass movement to expel the stools. Also important is mucosal immune mechanism which plays a role in few disorders like celiac disease or IBD etc. Now we should know that apart from the immune system we also have a thick neural connections that happens in the GI tract. These are the intrinsic nerves and the extrinsic nervous input. Now all of this intrinsic and extrinsic nervous system actually in turn also connects with the brain with the to and fro uh, modulation between either of them. Now this is called the brain gut axis. So let's uh, now discuss the classification of GI diseases. Now there are various mechanisms but the first one is impaired digestion and absorption. The most common intestinal maldigestion syndrome if asked in MCQ it is lactase deficiency which presents as excessive gas and diarrhea due to indigestion of dietary products. Now disorders where the, eat, the involvement is more diffuse like celiac disease, bacterial overgrowth, infectious enteritis, Crohn's ileitis, radiation damage etc. cause a diffuse problems and presence with anemia, dehydration, electrolyte disorders and malnutrition. 